Back in the 2020 election, the Washington Post, owned by Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos, told us mail-in voting was perfectly safe. Now that Amazon workers are trying to vote by mail to unionize their workforce, the powers that be are suddenly terrified about a botched election. You're watching TechShark, bite-sized news for conservatives surfing the net. It's been a while. It's been a wild couple of months, but TechShark is back. We're better than ever. I came here to take on big tech and shoe bubblegum. And I'm all out of bubblegum. In our story today, Billionaire Jeff Bezos, who owns both Amazon and The Washington Post, is playing both sides of the mail-in election fraud debate. The Post published pieces during the 2020 presidential election, denying that mail-in votes could lead to widespread voter fraud. Now, as COVID-19 continues into the Biden era, Amazon is trying to stop workers from voting by mail over unionization. Now, according to the Epoch Times, an Amazon spokesperson claimed, quote, we believe that the best approach to a valid, fair, and successful election is one that is conducted manually, in person. Don't facts like that just wipe you out? <laughs> Those concerns sound familiar? Now, conservative journalists have called out the clear contradiction. Bezos companies have strategically denied and then supported the idea that mail-in votes can lead to fraud. OAN reporter Jack Posobiec tweeted, quote, the owner of the Washington Post has officially stated that mail-in ballot elections have serious and systemic flaws, end quote. Now Twitter, being Twitter, then threw gasoline on the fire. Twitter labeled the tweet, suggesting, this claim of election fraud is disputed, and this tweet can't be replied to, retweeted, or liked due to a risk of violence. Sobic responded, Twitter has censored this so hard. I don't even receive notifications for when people are quote tweeting it now. Whether the Washington Post publishes pieces condemning or praising mail-in ballots appears dependent upon who or what is up for a vote. Now, during the 2020 presidential election, the Post published pieces fiercely denying that mail-in voting could lead to voter fraud. One mid-October piece was headlined, Five Myths About Mail-in Voting, and claimed, quote, academics, election law experts, and election administrators say voter fraud is vanishingly rare. But the Post also released a fact check on September 11th, suggesting, quote, a mountain of evidence shows that mail-in voting has been almost entirely free of fraud through the decades, but Trump insists that it's a recipe for disaster, end quote. Perhaps Bezos and his Amazon staff don't read his newspaper? I released a study late in the election season showing that the Washington Post and other liberal outlets criticized mail-in voting as a source of fraud in the past. In 2012, when the chief fraud concern was imposters voting at polls in place of other people, the Washington Post was clear that other sources of fraud, such as absentee votes, were comparatively far more real. Quote, it may still be possible to steal an American election, if you know the right way to go about it. Recent court cases from Appalachia to the Miami suburbs have revealed the tricks of an underground trade. Conspirators allegedly bought off absentee voters, faked absentee ballots, and bribed people heading to the polls to vote one way or another. Now here's the shark bite. There are people who want to understand what is going on, and there are people who don't. Liberals, working for one of the world's richest men, switched on whether mail-in voting was perfectly safe or a source of fraud when it served their interests. You can't really explain this to many liberals, though. To them, that hypocrisy is a conspiracy theory. And to them, questioning liberal experts makes you seem low class. They can't even explain why you're wrong, but they worry that if they admit to themselves that some of the numbers just don't add up, that they'd shapeshift into one of their hated conservative relatives they see every year at Thanksgiving. Now, there's no need for you to disavow your loved ones for not getting it, but just accept that they don't want to. On the other hand, I got a bone to pick with some on the right. Bezos, like many other big tech CEOs, illustrates a point many establishment conservatives will not like me saying. Despite my show's retro look, I think all the rhetoric about socialists and communists belongs in the 80s. It's not communists you gotta worry about. It's liberal billionaires who are so powerful they can change reality on a dime to suit their interests. Sure, yes, there are rioters and college cry bullies who call themselves communists or Marxists or whatever, 
but they're just the mindless pawns. Many of America's biggest companies donated millions of dollars to activist organizations as protesters rampaged through streets last summer. Newsflash, bub. If you're a rioter who's getting bailed out of prison by politicians, millions in donations from mega corporations, and solidarity from fast food chains, you're not raging against the machine, you're raging with it. I mean, sci-fi writer William Gibson, the godfather of cyberpunk, the sci-fi subgenre that warned about dark futures ruled by powerful mega corporations, praised Bezos for denying services and basically deplatforming free speech platform Parler. Are you seeing the irony yet? Punk is no longer punk. Cyberpunk ain't cyberpunk either now. Now, if Jeff Bezos were a communist, he'd probably let his workers form a workers' union. But Bezos isn't a communist. He's a liberal billionaire terrified of his workers unionizing. In fact, Breitbart reported on how Whole Foods, which is also owned by Jeff Bezos, literally tracks which stores are most dangerously close to unionizing. Breitbart summarized one study basically indicating that the more diverse a workforce is, the less likely its workers are to form a union. In short, his researchers reportedly concluded that organizations which have multiple feuding identity groups are less likely to unite against Bezos' authority. Now that Bezos is increasingly worried about his workers rigging an election to unionize, his company, The Washington Post, has finally sounded the alarm on mail-in voting. In short, the liberals in your life might be fooled into supporting establishment nonsense, particularly with people like Biden coming back into power. But you shouldn't. You gotta see big tech tyrants like Bezos and realize what the conservative movement is up against. It's time to break them up through antitrust measures, because that's the one thing they fear. Thanks for watching Tech Shark. Once again, I'm Alex Hall with MRC TV and Newsbusters Tech Watch. Have a good week.